everyone, this is Miss Goldberry, and the purpose of this review and video is to help you with your semester final for Earth Science. This handout that I'm showing you right now lists all the major concepts that we can learn throughout the year from Unit 4 through 6 and 1 through 3, talking about plate tectonics, uniformitarianism, and I guarantee is if you go through each one of these main points and list the distinguishing characteristics and are able to answer these questions that you will be successful on the unit final. I'd also like to share with you just a, some of the other resources for your review under unit seven. So if you go to unit seven in your OLS, I'm just gonna increase the screen for just a moment, and go down to semester review and click on semester review like I've done already here for you, here are some of the major points for that we've learned the whole year. And again, if you're able to successfully answer these questions and understand these concepts, you're gonna be very successful. Now, our goals for out the whole year have been geological history, plate tectonics, rocks and minerals, atmosphere and weather are our main topics we've discovered and learned about this semester. As you go through each page, it talks about, for instance, the review of the, uh, of the Earth, of how it's composed of the different biospheres and how they interact with one another from the cryosphere to the hydrosphere to the atmosphere, life in its environments, including the layers of the Earth and their unique characteristics and depths. Then it has a nice overview of the geological history of the Earth and talks about careful inspection of sedimentary rocks can you reveal much about Earth's history. And it talks, this key word is very important to remember, uniformitarianism is a key concept in Earth science. Another great study tool is all of your unit vocabulary sheets of being able to identify those words and the concepts um, about those different vocabulary words from each unit will also be another way to be successful in your studies. Then of course, looking at how Earth's history is divided into time periods and that scientists developed this geological time scale, scale to break our 4.6 billion year old history into these different time periods. So here we are today. And remember our, our time scale is divided into, I call it epi, um, eons, eras, periods, and epics. From the Precambrian, um, Paleozoic, and here are the periods it's um, further divided into, the Mesozoic and the Cenozoic. And this is um, the eras and how they're broken out into different periods. That gives you diff additional information for each one. Then we have learned about the movement of lithospheric plates over millions of years, continental drift, and the arrangement and distribution of Earth's continents and oceans, and the theory of plate tectonics is critical in understanding Earth science. We're talking about a geological feature such as faults, volcanoes, and rifts, and where plates meet, what happens, where it happens, where plates meet, and all of the different amazing geological features such as faults and volcanoes and rifts that occur where our plates meet. And then understanding uh, the differences between the two. What happens when the plates come together? What happens when the plates move apart? What happens when they subduct under one another? So all those um, key concepts are, are important. Then we know that the lithospheric plates have always moved around Earth's surface and review how those lithospheric plates have moved and learning about your um, convergent plate boundaries for one example and then also your divergent plate boundary so this takes you through all the different types of events that are happening on earth's plates whether it's divergent convergent or subduction and what you can expect expect at each different type of event happening in the lithospheric plate. This is a great illustration, great review. Next, it talks about that rocks are aggregates of minerals and they're classified as igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. It's important to review the rock cycle and to identify how igneous rocks are formed, how sedimentary rocks are formed, and metamorphic rocks and how they interconnect with each other in the rock cycle. 
then you can go to this great interactive lesson on the rock cycle and review metamorphic sedimentation and igneous rocks and how they're interconnected with one another not only through information you've received previously but also from this great interaction interactive lesson and review this is fantastic because it's showing you how you can go from an igneous rock being to an exposed rock and then back into being a sedimentary event so this is an excellent study guide for the rock cycle know the three main types and how they're formed it also goes into this fantastic review on our atmosphere on what are the main components of each layer of our earth's atmospheric column such as the troposphere what's happening in the tropospheric layer and when you click on it it talks about the characteristics such as it's the lowest part of earth's atmosphere it consists of where it's where weather happens 75 percent of the total atmosphere mass of the, is located here in the troposphere it's the weather maker the stratosphere the second uh, layer of earth's atmosphere is situated about 10 to 50 kilometers above the earth's surface and this is where we have the ozone layer occurring the mesosphere it's altitude and temperature how it also know the chart about the temperature increasing and decreasing between each atmosphere review the chart I sent you previously and then again the thermosphere is the highest portion of Earth's atmosphere it's where this layer where ultraviolet radiation causes ionization and then, then the exosphere of course is the outermost layer where it extends uh, thousands of kilometers into space and fascinating our Earth's atmosphere great review sites Again, some of the most recent things we've been talking about are weather and the differential heating of Earth's surface land and water and how that differential heating creates global air circulation and different weather patterns. And remember, radiation from the sun, again, differential means different. So there's different heating of the Earth's land and, and water. And look at these wonderful interactions between global circulation one, which is showing how energy from the sun causes atmospheric convection cells, and I'll just give you a preview. Sunlight strikes the Earth more directly at the equator than at the poles, where it is more spread out. Therefore, the heat received at the equator is more intense. Air particles receive more heat energy at the equator. They rise into the atmosphere and move to the poles to replace cooling and sinking air. This creates a convection cell. Then just review all those slides. Remember, we're going from a direction that the flow is going from, from cool air to more warmer air, and we have the much middle temperature air and how it determines the winds and the ocean currents on our planet. Then there's the Global Circulation 2 video for you to watch as well. Talking about different weather and how major storms are also caused. We have these predictable air circulation patterns that create our winds, move our weather, and cause our major storms. So just to recap a little bit, starting from just Unit 4, again, knowing what the definition of uniformitarianism is, ensuring that you know what the main goal of Earth science is, particularly ge geological sciences, These are the main components for Unit 5, so some of our most recent units. Um, I, again, am sending this list to you, talking about the composition of the Earth's atmosphere, listing the layers of the atmosphere from bottom to top, and again, their functions. The mixture of gases, which gas is the most abundant, nitrogen, what's the second most abundant, oxygen, and then what are the other elements that are present? The other gases, what they compose of, their composition. Again, listing the characteristics of each atmospheric layer. Troposphere, remember, is where we live. Most civilian aircraft, if you've ever been in an airplane, remember, lives in the troposphere. Talk about an inversion, like how does an inversion happen and how is temperature related? How does ozone play a role in inversion? 
also the distinct characteristics of the mesosphere and how space shuttle travel generally happens in the thermal sphere. It's called the uppermost level of our atmosphere, extends 80 kilometers outward to about 640 kilometers. Defining radiation, convection, conduction, and how this is all um, heat is part of thermal energy that flows from one object to another. Talk about radiation, like so from uh, events of a fire, conduction again, and convection. Be able to predict where the Earth, sun's energy will hit the Earth with the most direct sunlight. Review temperature and pressure, how they're inter interconnected, barometers, how barometers are used to measure the pressure, atmospheric pressure. Again, how differential heating creates local and global winds and the Coriolis effect, how that also in turn influences global circulation. Again, lesson six is about the weather, the properties of air, moisture, pressure, and temperature, and how they're all interconnected, and how the clouds are formed, and the different types of precipitation events. I guarantee that if you review all your vocabulary sheets and this great end of unit review in lesson seven, that you'll be successful in your final. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to k-mail me. And also don't forget that there is a review on Monday at 1030 to 12. All right, thank you so much for your time and I hope you have a great weekend. Study hard, exercise, sleep, and eat great.